Hello, my name is Reverend Todd Laddick, and I'm the pastor here at First United Methodist Church of Newton, and I welcome you to worship. As always, it is important that we come, that we praise God together, we worship God together, and we, we grow as disciples of Jesus Christ so that we may not only serve each other within the context of our, our church community, but we can serve others outside of the walls and beyond. Today we are going to talk about the importance of the Trinity, and importantly, uh, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit, which tends to be the undersung uh, third of the tr Trinity. Everybody knows God, Creator God, Father God. Everybody knows uh, Jesus, the Son of God, uh, the Firstborn, the Lamb of God. But uh, people often don't really consider the Holy Spirit, let alone how we ought to uh, how we ought to be following the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And so that is what we're going to talk about uh, today. And with that, I welcome you to worship. Good morning. My name is Christy Spriggs, and I also would like to welcome you to First United Methodist Church of Newton. Let us join together responsively in the call to worship. To see God's kingdom, you must be born from above. We seek your kingdom, Lord. To enter God's kingdom, you must be born of water and the Spirit. We seek your kingdom, Lord. God sends us the Spirit to show us what love is. We seek your kingdom, Lord. God sends Jesus to bring us eternal life. May we be led by his Spirit, and being led, become your children. Let us sing together our opening hymn, We Believe in One True God. our opening prayer. Creating all-powerful and triune God, we acknowledge your authority as our maker to command our obedience. Loving Jesus, one with humanity and Holy Spirit, living presence of God, we thank you for the countless blessings you pour into our lives. Our hearts rejoice, Holy One, for your infinite love which echoes through creation for Christ's love, which came to us in human form, for the Spirit's love, which calls our hearts into fellowship with you. We bow before you, the three in one, and ask that you continue to bless us, that we may draw ever closer to you as your children and your heirs. Amen.
As always, friends, I like to invite you into a spirit of prayer. It is um, always a privilege and an honor for us to be able to support each other, not just with our, our time and our talents and our presence and our service and our witness, but also with our uh, prayers. And prayers are such an important part of who we are as Christian because it's the way with, that we communicate with God. And it is a way in which God th communicates to us and through us. And so prayer is a vital way for us to not only keep in contact with God, but also keep in contact with each other through, through our spiritual connection that we have as children of God. 
Um, there's much for us to pray for in our world, uh, much in which uh, we can all uh, use to, uh, to, to ha have more grace, to have more patience, to have more compassion. Those are all things I think every one of us can grow on some level from. Um, there are people in this world right now who are just so down and out, so, so disease-ridden in themselves that they can't, they can't even move past where they are right now, or they feel like they can't. And you have called us to be uh, compassionate listeners and compassionate uh, sojourners on this journey called life with other people. And so if there are people who are, who are, who are going through uh, illness or going through mental illness or going through tough times in their relationships or going through any situation that seems to be holding them down and keeping them away from you, Lord, we ask that you put those people in our lives so that we may be a presence of hope, healing, and wholeness for them just as you have been for us but in all things lord you have called us to pray and so we turn to you now in prayer gracious and loving god we we thank you and praise you for all of the people who are worshiping with us today all of the people who are joining us in prayer we thank you lord for um for the 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 lives of of those who touched us in a way that brought us to know you and Lord, we ask that you use us to touch the lives of others so that others may come to know you as well. Lord, we have been called to be a praying people, a people who are constantly connected with you and connected with each other through you. And so, Lord, we thank you for reminding us to pray and to, to pray unceasingly. For any who are suffering from any illness, whether it be uh, a physical disease or whether it be uh, social or emotional or psychological, or whether it be relational, um, whatever the case may be, financial, whatever healing is needed, Lord, we ask that your healing hand be upon those who need it, that they will receive your healing, and they will know that you love them, that you are with them, and that you are calling them to be a part of the healing of others, so that brick by brick we may be building not only the foundation, but the entirety of the kingdom of God, of your kingdom, which you are calling us to inherit. And so we thank you and we praise you, Lord, and we pray all of these things in the name, in your name, the name above all names, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Sunday school friends. Do you like mystery stories? I do. Here's one that our church book club has been reading. It's called Tell No One. Really creepy. Here's one you might like. It's called What Really Happened to Humpty from the Files of a Hard Boiled Detective. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Humpty Dumpty was pushed. At least I think so. Who am I? I am Joe Dumpty, Humpty's younger brother. Was he pushed? Who did it? Was it Goldilocks? The three bears? Or did the big bad wolf huff and puff and blow him off the wall? I won't spoil that mystery for you by telling you the end. If you want to read it yourself, that book is in the Sussex County Library. Today, we're going to talk about another kind of mystery. 
but it's not the kind of mystery a detective like Joe Dumpty can solve. We can read about this mystery in my next book, The Bible. Today's mystery is one of the mysteries of God. That's why a detective can't solve it. Like us, detectives are only human. Pastors and teachers and parents are only human. We humans can't completely understand the mysteries of God because God is bigger than all of us. And that's okay. God is an exciting and wondrous mystery. Today is a day the church calls Trinity Sunday. The word Trinity may still be new to you, but when you hear what we're talking about, you might say to yourself, oh, I know about that. That would be a great way to start to understanding the Bible's mystery of the Trinity. A question I'd like to ask you about today's mystery is, how many gods are there? If you said one, you are right. The Bible says there is only one God. But the Bible tells us that our one God is, at the same time, three persons. Last week on Pentecost Sunday, Pastor Todd, Pastor Todd talked to you about the Holy Spirit. Today we're going to learn how God, the Holy Spirit, works with God the Father, God the Son, as a Holy Trinity. Here's the mystery. Each of these three persons is completely 100% God. God isn't sliced into three pieces like a cake. Also, the Trinity isn't three different gods put together like one plus one plus one equals three. It's really like one plus one plus one equals one. Well, now, how can that be? It is a mystery. Let's have some fun being detectives, looking for clues to help us learn more about this mystery. Clue number one. Let's start by spelling the word Trinity. We use the same three letters at the beginning, T-R-I as we do when we spell triangle. How many sides does a triangle have? Let's draw one in the air and count. One, two, three. How about triceratops? You know that word, that long word, triceratops? How many horns does this dinosaur have, James? Let's count them. One, two, three. So when we see the word Trinity, we know it's about the three persons of God. You might not remember your own baptism, but you may have seen James's little sister, Alma, or baby Andrew Iliff being baptized in church by Pastor Todd. At their baptisms, Pastor Todd touched their foreheads three times with water as he said, I baptize you in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Whenever you hear those words, you will know that we are talking about the mystery of the Trinity. Clue number two. We can find in the Bible. It's the story of Jesus being baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist, in the Jordan River. Some things will look different from your baptism. 
This Bible story is a very important one. For the first time, all three persons in the Trinity show up together in the Bible at the same time in the same place. Let's watch for God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in our video. So Jesus shows up and asks John to baptize him too. And as Jesus comes up out of the water, the sky opens and the Spirit of God comes down on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven says, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. Whoa, so that voice was God talking. Which means Jesus is God's son, the son of God. And the Spirit that came down is the Spirit of God. Wait, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit? That's the Trinity. We learned about this. We sure did. God is one God with three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All three are God, and yet God is one. I remember this part. It made my head hurt then, and it still makes my head hurt. Take some aspirin. The important thing is that now all three persons of God show up at one time in one place. Whoa, the people watching must have known something big was going on. Let's see the same story once more, but told in a little bit different way. Can you still find the three persons of the Trinity? Tell us, are you the Christ? I baptize you with water, but someone is coming who is much greater than I am. I'm not good enough even to untie his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He has his threshing fork with him to thresh out all the grain and gather the wheat into his barn. And God, the Holy Spirit, came down upon Jesus in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my own dear son. I am pleased with you. Did you find the Trinity? God's three persons? God the Father was heard in a voice from heaven. God the Son was Jesus being baptized. Did you hear God call Jesus, my son? God the Holy Spirit came down in the body of a dove and landed gently on Jesus. All three persons of the Trinity, one God, the three in one, together at Jesus' baptism at the same time and the same place. Mm -hmm. Clue number three. This mm -hmm. morning, our Sunday school children at home are all wearing a Trinity necklace. Brian is showing a picture of the shape on our necklaces. It looks like a fancy triangle, a triangle that's all knotted up. In fact, this shape is often called a trinity knot. In this knot, we can see three loops for the three persons in the Holy Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all in one knot. When we trace all around the trinity knot with our finger, we realize there is no beginning and no end. It's all one connected line. The Holy Trinity is all one connected God, not three separate gods. Look carefully at those lines again. Aren't they all the same size? They are equal, 
as each person in the Holy Trinity is equal. Aren't the loops all made of the same kind of lines? On your necklace, the lines are all made of metal. On our picture, the lines are all made of ink. Each person in the Holy Trinity is all made of the same kind of heavenly God material. What do you think that God material is? For clue number four, we'll go to one verse in our book of God's mysteries, the Bible. You children can find that verse on the top of your picture of the Trinity knot. The verse in the Bible is 1 John 4, 16. It tells us God is love. Can you find the words God is love on your paper? Draw a heart or a circle around them. Love, that's what the heavenly material God is made of. As your finger traced the lines of the Trinity knot, you were tracing God's love flowing all through the three persons of the Trinity. That's a lot of love, and it never stops. Do you know where you fit in the Trinity knot? Right here at the very center of God. Let's have everyone take your pencil and write your name on the small triangle in the center of the knot, where Brian, Brian wrote his name. God invites us to live with him, surrounded by and filled with his love. If you look carefully again at your Trinity knot, you will see there is a circle connecting all three loops. The circle reminds us of God's never-ending love, connecting all three persons of the Trinity, three in one, as all that love surrounds us too. Have you tried, like many people have, tried so hard to understand the Trinity, how three persons could be one God? How one plus one plus one could equal one? How could that be? Do the math. Does it add up? With the Holy Trinity, it does. Following the clues this morning, we are discovering that one, the God the Father, plus God the Son, plus God the Holy Spirit, really does add up to one God. Let's pray. Dear God, the three in one, we thank you for surrounding us in your holy trinity. We are full of joy that your love is always all around us and in us. We love you too, God. Help us to work on understanding your mysteries. When we don't understand something, please give us the faith to go on believing in you anyway. We praise you for showing us answers to all our questions in your own time. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. For our last clue to understanding the mystery, let's join Christy Spriggs as she sings a Trinity song. While we sing, find the picture of the Trinity knot in our video. What does that song say about you? You might be something like a Trinity. You are not made of God's heavenly material. You are so wonderfully made by God in his likeness, with love, out of human material, fret, flet, flesh, and skin, and bones.
You can be a daughter and a sister and a friend. The possibilities never end. Mother and an Anna and an auntie too. What three things are you? You can be a grand. You can be a brother and a cousin and a son. That's three different things in one. You can be a daughter and a sister and a friend. The possibilities never end. Neighbor and a brother and a friend, that's true. Our scripture reading today is from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we call him Abba, Father. For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his heirs. In fact, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God for this word. Sorry. 
Here's the good news. If you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you put your trust in him, you have been adopted as one of God's children. And that makes all of us heirs to God's kingdom. However, to whom much is given, much is required. Yeah! I have a surprise for you! Yeah! Hold me the crown! Yeah! Hold me the crown! 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 All right, kids, I'm homie the clown. Y'all ready to have some fun? Yeah! All right, what y'all want me to do first? Oh, hi, 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 oh, bust my skull open and have my blood and brains ooze out on the carpet so you can get a couple of cheap laughs, huh? I don't think so. <laughs> Homie, don't play that. <laughs> what else? Ooh, bing, oh, bing. Oh, oh. Hey, hey. Can we smash the cream pie in your face like yeah. you're doing the clowns and stuff? Yeah! I think you got it backwards, son. <laughs> How do you feel about yourself? <laughs> totally dissed, homie. <laughs> That's why homie don't play that. <laughs> All right, how about a magic trick? Yeah! yeah! Who got a dollar? I do, homie. <laughs> Here you go, homie. All right, I fold it once. Ooh. Oh. Twice. Ah. Now it's gone. Ta-da! <laughs> Homie may be a clown, but he don't make a fool out of himself. Well, well, why you become a clown, dear? I guess it's because I got so much love to give. And it's part of my prison work release program. So I got about five more years of this clown crap. Cartoon time! 
time? Yeah! yeah! <laughs> Y'all pay special attention because this one has a certain message to it. <laughs> Once upon a time, homie the clown went to a fancy white restaurant. <laughs> Shea Whitey was the name. <laughs> As always, homie gets a hassled by the man. <laughs> he tells him, that a tie is required in order to eat in this establishment. So homie says, man, get them ties out of my face before I kick them. <laughs> but unfortunately, Monsieur Snowflake didn't quite hear homie correctly. So homie had no choice but to keep his word. <laughs> <laughs> so what if we learn if nothing else, children? A homie don't play it! Right, now let's sing the homie the clown song. Yeah! yeah! Repeat after me. Homie the clown. Homie the clown. Don't mess around. Don't mess around. Don't mess around. Even though the man, even though the man, try to keep him down, try to keep him down. One day, homie will break all the chains, then he'll fly away. But until that day, homie don't play. I said, repeat after me. Very good. You made homie smile after all. Birthday kid. <laughs> I'm not sure how many of you used to watch In Loving In Living Color on Fox. That was a uh, In Living Color was a sketch comedy show, much like Saturday Night Live, uh, starring a predominantly black cast. Uh, in particular, the Waynes family, including Keenan Ivory Waynes, um, Kim Waynes, Sean Waynes, Damon Waynes, and of course, uh, Marlon Waynes, uh, as well as others such as Jim Carrey, Jamie Foxx, Jennifer Lopez was on there as, as it, one of the dance girls, uh, Rosie Perez was a choreographer on the show, and you had Tommy Davidson and David Allen Greer to name a few. I loved the show uh, as a kid uh, just because I found it funny and, and the likes of uh, the Waynes brothers and, uh, and uh, Jim Carrey, of course. Uh, there, it was never short of, of uh, amazing any of the acts that I saw them do. Uh, but as I grew older, I, I, I grew to love the show even more because whether I realized it or not, it taught me, no matter how in a subtle, how much of it, of it was in a subtle way, it taught me at least a, a scratch on the surface of the of the, his, of the uh, black experience in this country. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's look at today's uh, sketch um, about Homie the Cl Homie D Clown, Homie D Clown, and um, as a kid, Homie's specific uh, use of language and his references would have passed right over me. I wouldn't have thought twice about them, uh, which is what makes a character like Homie dangerous to parents, right? Like that the humor is just enough to go over the, ki over the kids' heads, but not enough to go over the parents' heads, which then make the parents project what they're thinking onto their kids, and it becomes a whole scary situation. Anyway, I love the show because it really gave me a sense of reality that I wasn't accustomed to. Uh, I didn't have or, or wasn't around the use of, of the language that sometimes was on it. Um, his references certainly would, wouldn't have uh, made any sense to me in my context because I wasn't living the black experience in rural white Sussex County, New Jersey. So I saw, so what I saw was a clown who was annoyed by rather childish kids. That's it. That's, that's what I saw. 
Perhaps that is all you saw, too. However, a closer examination showed something else. First, we noticed that Homie's objections have only to do with things that degrade him as a human being. So he wasn't going to entertain being degraded, whether it be by a kid watching him trip on a banana peel or be it by a kid wanting to toss cream pies in his face. Why is this? Well, why do such things bother homie? Well, he didn't really say anything that he specifically did to get into trouble, but we do know that that is really kind of besides the point. It doesn't matter why he's in trouble. It matters that he's in trouble. Blacks disproportionately face incarceration and criminalization in this country, and it doesn't matter if he was caught stealing bubblegum or he was caught stealing a car. The chances are that he would be incarcerated for what he did at a rate that white people don't experience. And people will say, well, yeah, but if you look at the statistics, there are more white people than black people in jail. And that's true because more white people in this country or more people in this country are white and less are black. But if you look at it proportionately, there's by far more black people in prison than white people by proportion. So yeah, being asked to make a fool of himself uh, coming from Homie's background doesn't make a whole lot of sense to Homie. What we know is more than enough. We know he's just another jailed brother and the only way out of the cell was through degrading himself as Homie de Clown. Which, of course, he has to announce by law that he is a part of the, uh, the pr prisoner uh, work release program. And you have to let everybody know that that's what you're a part of so that they know that you're serving your time, that they know you're getting your punishment. It's just another further degradation and dehumanization of homie. Not sounding so funny anymore, is he? Now, to the kids, he's still just some silly cartoonish guy who likes to tell jokes and be funny. And that's how most kids would see a clown. Homie's perspective is the opposite. He has too long played the fool for the man, also known as the government. And he ain't ever going to play the fool again. Nope, the clown says, homie don't play that. While seeing the Holy Spirit in light of Homie D. Clown doesn't entirely fit for a number of obvious reasons, there is enough of a connection that I felt it was an entertaining and worthwhile enough analogy. For far too long, the Holy Spirit has been treated with less significance than the other two-thirds of the Trinity. Yet that is biblically and doctrinally false. Our Christian creeds teach us that the three persons of the Trinity are all unique personalities and at the same time are completely of the same substance, meaning that none of the three persons of the Trinity can be seen as less or more than any less or more God than any other. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are equally God, and there could not be God apart from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is who God has revealed God's self to be. We can all acknowledge that it is hard to fully grasp the Christian Godhead. Absolutely. And if someone tells you it isn't hard to grasp, question them. Like kids, in, like the kids in the sketch, we can try to understand the Holy Spirit by grasping what he does. We can try to holy, understand the Holy Spirit just as the, clown, the kids tried to understand Homie the Clown. For instance, clowns make funny faces. 
They also slip on banana peels and other things. And they get cream pies thrown in their faces at best on a good day. However, those things aren't what make Homie the type of clown he is. Not at all. Homie was at one time like every one of those kids at the birthday party, looking wide-eyed with excitement at what fun the party would be. Except that, as he grew up, Homie realized that his reality didn't afford him the same life it afforded others. And just look at the makeup of that birthday party. You had a couple black kids, you had some white kids. Those white kids are going to have far more opportunity than those black kids at that birthday party. Why? Simply because of the color of their skin. So what Homie didn't realize when he was their age, he certainly realized as he stood there before them, a clown. Homie realized that his reality didn't afford him the same life it afforded others. He didn't make it to college. He, his path led him to the streets, to prison, to a criminal record. Homie knows people want a fun-loving, less-than-human, laughing clown to cheer him up. But what they don't know is, Homie don't play that. Like Homie, if we reduce the Holy Spirit down to specific function, we don't have the fullness of the Holy Spirit. If if you just reduce Todd down to being a pastor, you don't know the real Todd any more than anybody else does. Because I'm not just a pastor. If we reduce the Holy Spirit down to a specific function, We don't have the full Holy Spirit. For instance, we may have a companion. However, is that all the Holy Spirit is? What about the advocate and protector who sustains the Christian life? What about the comforter? The fact is that the Holy Spirit is more than a job or a function. However, the Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is the presence of God with us. And it is that reality that will help us to know what the Holy Spirit plays as well as what the Spirit don't play. Let's follow the sketch and see what Scripture says that the Spirit don't play. The Spirit don't play favorites. The Spirit don't play excuses. The Spirit don't make fun. The Spirit don't tear down. I know I'm killing all of those grammar people out there by using don't. Don't in a sentence that is grammatically incorrect. I've waited my entire life to do this. To do this to all... Only kidding. Okay, back to what the, the Spirit doesn't do. The Spirit don't tear down. What we do know about the Spirit is that Jesus was sending the Holy Spirit as our advocate and our helper. The Spirit is linked to both the Father and the Son, inseparably linked. You can see this in passages such as 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 through 5, Matthew chapter 18, or chapter 28, verse 19. We also know that the Holy Spirit has transformative power. The Holy Spirit empowers us to minister to others through prophecy, through healing, witnessing, preaching, and the other gifts of the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives us the foretaste of the future. The Holy Spirit gives us the foretaste of the future. It is the Holy Spirit that works sanctification into our lives, perfecting us in God's love. The Holy Spirit enters into anyone who is open to God's guidance and to those who who become heirs to God's glory, to Christ's glory. 
However, as the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 8, verse 17, if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. If we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. Brother Paul's words on what kinship with God means is very insightful, actually. To share in God's glory means to share in Christ's suffering. How could that be? Our very asking that question betrays our sinfulness, doesn't it? We ask, how could it be? How could it be that I have to suffer? And yet that we ask that question betrays it. We think we are entitled to avoid suffering since Christ suffered. However, to truly be akin to Christ, one must be akin to his or her, uh, or, excuse me, one must be akin to Christ's self-sacrificial love as well. That doesn't mean we throw ourselves needlessly at harm, but what it does mean is that we will follow Christ in putting others before we put ourselves. Think about that. Think about what a world that would be if just Christ's followers alone did that. This is what the Reverend Dietrich Bonhoeffer opened his book, The Cost of Discipleship, with. And I'm going to read it to you. Cheap grace is the preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance, baptism without church discipline, communion without confession, absolution without personal confession. Cheap grace is without discipleship, is grace without discipleship, grace without the cross, grace without Jesus Christ, living and incarnate. Costly grace is the treasure hidden in the field. For the, sake of it, for the sake of it, a man will gladly go and sell all that he has. It is the pearl of great price to buy, which the merchant will sell all his goods. It is the kingly rule of Christ, for whose sake a man will pluck out the eye which causes him to stumble. It is the call of Jesus Christ, at which the disciple leaves his nets and follows him. Costly grace is the gospel which must be sought again and again, the gift which must be asked for, the door which a man must knock upon. Such grace is costly because it calls us to follow, and it, and it is grace because it calls us to follow Jesus Christ. It is costly because it costs a man his life. It is grace because it gives a man the only true life. It is costly because it condemns sin and grace because it justifies the sinner. Above all, it is costly because it costs God the life of his son. Ye were bought at a price. And what has cost God much cannot be cheap for us. Above all, it is grace because God did not reckon his son too dear a price to pay for our life, but delivered him up for us. Costly grace is the incarnation of God. I'll end with that last sentence again. Costly grace is the incarnation of God. What Bonhoeffer was articulating was exactly what Paul wrote in our scripture today. God's grace is free, and one is free to accept it and share it and share in God's glory. But make no mistake, it will cost you. In order to share in Christ's glory, one must share in Christ's suffering. No pain, no gain. And in order to be in relationship with Christ, one must be in relationship with the Father as well as the Spirit. One cannot just be in relationship with one-third of the Trinity. One can only be in relationship with all of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So let me ask this to you. Have you found yourself called to serve Christ? Have you found yourself called to serve God? And if you have, do you either have no clue what you're called to do? 
or you know what your calling is and you're just afraid to answer it. Which of those is it? That you know what you're called to do, but you're too afraid to answer it? Or that you're not sure what you're called to do and you're waiting for God to reveal it? There's no wrong answer, so long as we're being honest with who we are and where we are. Regardless, the Holy Spirit says, and this is to both of those questions, regardless of what your answer is, the Holy Spirit says, I don't think so. The Spirit don't play that. I am the Spirit of the Most High God. I hovered over the edge of the deep. I have filled the upper rooms of houses and the inner chambers of hearts, of human hearts. I, God, the Holy Spirit, know my plan for you and will guide you there. No matter what your demographical makeup is, your congregation is called to serve your local community. And it is called to make disciples of those in your local community as well. Now, we may be thinking, or at least some of us, but we're too old. Or, that's why we need more younger families. The Holy Spirit says, I don't think so. The Spirit don't play that. We may be thinking, but God, that's the pastor's job. Or I have other things I need to do. The Holy Spirit says, I don't think so. The Spirit don't play that. We may be thinking, but Lord, I am not worthy. I'm just human. Or I'm not any good at that. The Holy Spirit says, oh, stop it. Spirit, don't play that. Let's be truthful. We have a lot of excuses as to why we can't put the work in. In fact, it's less that we can't put the work in and more that we won't put the work in. Furthermore, biblical truth reveals that all people called by God have had such excuses, but the Holy Spirit don't do such excuses. Jeremiah said, but Lord, I'm too young. God said, I'll form the words in your mouth. No worries. Uh, Moses said, Lord, what will I say? I'll give you the words, but I don't speak well. Great. I'm sending Aaron along to speak for you. Throughout scripture, there have been people who have told God no along the way, and yet they end up serving God. Why? Because the spirit don't play that. The spirit has chosen You has chosen us all. The Holy Spirit doesn't do excuses. The Spirit points us in the direction of God, in the direction that God knows we can go. And we only make excuses to deny our call out of fear. Each attempt at denial... Each willingness to settle for the self-fulfillment comfort club, each push toward apathetic complacency leads us to holy rebuke. Spirit, don't play that. God created us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God created us, and we were created in God's image. Are we saying that God can't do through us what God wants to do? Is that what we're saying? The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the holy mystery is the one true God. And we are called to be united in that triune God. There is no room for excuses or for cheap grace. The Spirit don't play that. Justice, mercy, humility, discipleship, the Spirit plays that. And we are being challenged to as well. So how is the Spirit calling you to serve? I hope that you'll reflect on this. 
I hope that you'll email us at newtonumc07860 at gmail.com or bring in your answer on June 6th and place it in the prayer basket if you're coming in person and, uh, and we will acknowledge what we receive. Um, so I hope that it, either you bring it in person next week uh, when you come uh, or you email it to newtonumc07860. But friends, let us open ourselves up to the wholeness of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and be moved by God to do the work of the kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you and praise you for this challenging message. We thank you for um, opening our hearts to what it is that you have designed for us, what our purpose is in your plan. Lord, help us to be a, a part of, of what it is you're doing. Help us to play the part that you have given us. And help us, Lord, to, to grow and, and to accept uh, the responsibilities with which you have assigned us with, uh, with patience, with understanding, and with eagerness to bring the good news of your love to all people. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And friends, it's at this time that I would like to invite you into a uh, spirit of prayer, uh, or spirit of giving, uh, and a spirit of prayer. Uh, be prayerful that, uh, that the Spirit will spark within you a desire to give as much as you can give, and that the Spirit will spark that same desire in others, and also give, uh, and be in a spirit of giving, for it is good to support the mission and the ministries of, of the church and what Christ is doing here in Newton and beyond. This is our last day of, in, of uh, all virtual worship service. We will be back to in-person next week. Of course, that also uh, we will be live streaming, so for those of you who may not be fully vaccinated yet and are, are, are waiting to come back, waiting until you're fully vaccinated to come back, um, or whatever the case may be, uh, you are still welcome to join us online. We will be live streaming as well. Keep in mind the live stream will be more simple than our, uh, our all virtual services have been because we will uh, be streaming them live rather than editing them later. So uh, be aware of that. But with all that said, uh, be in a spirit of giving and give as the Holy Spirit has called you.
Let us pray. O Lord God, these offerings we make here are tokens. They represent our love for you. We thank you for your Spirit's gifts to us, so mysterious, bountiful, and astounding. They are blessings upon blessings. These blessings reveal your presence among us as the merciful, holy, and loving one. Amen. Let us sing together our closing hymn, Lift High the Cross.
Remember, friends, we are a people of God. We are a people of the Father. We are a people of the, of the Son. We are a people of the Spirit. We are the people of God. So go into the world and share the love, the creativity, the compassion, the empathy, and the justice that God has for all of us with all of those around you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.